Welcome to the Henry AI Labs walkthrough of Keras code examples. Keras has provided 56 code examples implementing popular ideas in deep learning. This ranges from the basics such as simple MNIST and IMDB text classification, all the way to cutting edge research ideas such as knowledge distillation, supervised contrastive learning, and transformers. We'll also explore fun generative examples like variational autoencoders and cyclegan. My contribution to these code examples is to explain every single line of code in each of them, walking through each of the individual Keras examples. I'm not the author of these code examples. Please consider starting the GitHub repositories to show support to the original authors. From this video, you'll learn how to load the MNIST dataset using the Keras datasets library, how to pre-process this dataset for a quick input into a simple neural network, and then how to train the model and evaluate it quickly with this test set that's been loaded into memory with this dataset library. So as stated in the title, this example is a bit easier. Simple MNIST with a convolutional network. So first we import NumPy, Keras, and Keras layers. So now we prepared the data. So here's the first interesting thing we've seen in our series. Keras has built-in datasets. Uh, Torch Vision, Torch Text, and Keras, they all have some built-in datasets that you can load datasets just by calling this API call. So you do keras.datasets.mnist.loadData. So this is much different from in the last example. We had to get our data by doing a curl and then grabbing this link from the web, and then we had to pipeline it from the disk into our workspace. Whereas Keras has some examples of datasets that are built in that we can just do datasets.mnist.loadData. So mostly this is just uh, academic datasets that are accessible like this, but it's definitely a trend in this direction, which is really exciting. Uh, Hugging Face, they recently did an NLP library where you have this kind of easy syntax to load data into your models. So another interesting thing about this code snippet, we see we have the 10 MNIST digits, the input shape. Here's the other interesting thing. So when we use this API to load our images, they're originally stored as 28 by 28 dimensions. So this is describing the height and the width of the MNIST digit represented as a grayscale image. So in order to make this compatible for our deep neural network, we're going to do numpy.expanddimensions xtrain minus 1. So as shown in this code that I've added, what you do is if you have a numpy array that's 28 by 28, and then you expand the dimensions, you add this one channel in the back just to make it describe the 28 height, 28 width, one channels as in grayscale. So then the other thing we do is we do keras.utils.2categorical to convert our y train from, say, uh, 9 or 6 into a one hot encoded vector for the class label. So now Y train is going to describe, say it was uh, 2, it would now be 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And this is how we do the uh, categorical cross entropy loss when we're fitting these labels with our machine learning model. So now we're building the model. Compared to the first example where we build this complex exception network, here we're just using two convolutional layers with 32 filters, 3x3 three three convolutions, interleaved with max pooling, then we flatten this feature plane, apply dropout with a 50% probability, and then apply a dense fully connected layer from that flattened feature vector into the 10 output classes. So then we also have model.summary. So this is model.summary from Keras, and it is really useful because it shows us the intermediate dimensions of the feature planes in our deep neural networks. So we start off with the 28 by 28 uh, MNIST digits. We pass it through a 3x3 three three convolution that downsamples the spatial resolution to 26 by 26. Note how this is 2 less than the original height and width of the MNIST digits. We have 32 such feature planes. So the dimension of this intermediate tensor in our deep neural network is 26 by 26 by 32, and we have 320 parameters in these convolutional filters. These are the parameters that we use to transform these intermediate feature planes in deep neural networks. Now we apply max pooling 2D. This is going to be a spatial uh, pooling operation that's going to take the max value between every two pixel slots and slide that across to reduce the spatial resolution from 26 to 13. Then on this 13 by 13 by 32 feature plane, we apply another convolutional 2D that downsamples it to 11 by 11, and this convolutional layer has 18,496 parameters. Then we do another max pooling, and then we flatten this out into a vector. So we take these 5 by 5, we have 64 5 by 5 feature planes, and then we flatten that out into a one-dimensional vector that has dimensionality 1,600 by one, because it's a vector. Then we apply dropout, and we match from 1,600 into the 10 output classes. So all in all, the simple neural network has 34,826 parameters, most of which are contained in the second convolutional layer 
and the output mapping from the uh, dense feature vector into the output classes. Another really important theme in our series walking through Keras code examples is how much faster models run on GPUs compared to CPUs. So this is running the model, this simple convolutional network to fit MNIST on a CPU. Note how it takes about 33 seconds to step through the dataset. Now that we've changed the runtime to the GPU provided by Google Collab, it takes one second to step through the data compared to the 33 seconds when using the CPU. Now that we have a trained model, we can use the short syntax provided by Keras to evaluate our model with our previously loaded test set. So remember that we have this API where we load in the X test and Y test. We normalize X test by dividing each value by 255, expanding the dimensions of each image so it's compatible, and then changing the labels to be categorically one hot encoded vectors compared to just say a numeric number, say three, four, or five, that would denote each individual handwritten digit. So we can use this quick syntax, model that evaluate, our data sets that are already loaded into memory, and then from this we get the score, and score at index zero is the loss, and score at index one is the accuracy on the test set. So we quickly achieve 99% accuracy on MNIST using this simple model because MNIST is a, is a toy example and it's easy to get a good model with this. So to recap, some of the big takeaways are noting how we have these uh, data sets that are loaded into Keras. These are mostly academic data sets like MNIST or CIFAR 10 or maybe STL 10. These kinds of academic data sets are loaded in uh, computer vision as well as text data sets like IMDB and maybe some semantic text similarity data sets. So we also note this expanding the dimensions, converting labels to categorical, a quick sense of how we can build convolutional networks and just more experience and familiarity with this syntax, training the model, noting how much faster it is on the GPU, and then a shorthand syntax to evaluate a model on a test set that's already been loaded into memory. Mm -hmm.